Welcome to what is going on in the UC and today I want to talk about true power. Power is the ability to get things done. Even if you don't believe in God, especially if you don't believe in God, you have to believe that human beings want certain things accomplished in their life. Human beings want love to reach the stars. Human beings have intellectual goals, emotional goals, practical goals. But everyone knows what it's like not to get what you want. And this is where the Bible comes in saying, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is the tree of life. We know that the tree of life represents the true man, Father, Jesus. But we can further extrapolate. Now, even if you don't believe in God, even if you don't believe in religion, if I tell you that the tree of life symbolizes a life of success, a life where we are unimpeded in the journey to attain the things that we want, if the tree of life represents that, then you must agree. When you have someone living a life of success, you have a true person in the ultimate sense. That's a good thing. Even if you're an atheist, even if you don't believe in God. So the question is, how to attain the power to push through the things that are impeding us? And how do we notice those things that are impeding us? Now you could say that money is impeding you. People are impeding you. The government's impeding you. You don't know enough languages um, to be actually a global person. We all want to succeed in something that is outlined in this place called our heart. Our heart is just as unique as our fingerprints. Only we know truly what we feel. It would be nice along the way to have companions who also know what we want. But from this position, and now I'm talking to you, from this position, we know what the word power means to us individually. The ability to get those things done. And it is from this position that I want to reach out to you, church member or non-church member, atheist or God-believing person. I want to reach you here. Here is where... The DP informs us, even us atheists, it sort of hints to us the fact that, you know, the first blessing is not enough. Our own mind-body unity is not enough. Sometimes we wonder if certain dreams that we need require cooperation from people and we can't get that cooperation. And some people might think about, well, dang, how do I get people to buy into and get on board with my plans to get those things that I want, right? Well, dictators and disrespectful people will think along the lines of manipulation, right? But so-called good people will think along the lines of how to respectfully engage in something called love. One hand washes the other. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. I will be your companion along the road of life helping you to attain your goals and you'll be mine, right? This is so called a friendship, right? So how to be good to each other so that we bring out the best in each other and, you know, sort of like one plus one equals three. But here's the problem. God made human beings with free will. So when you're betrayed, how is it? When, from, from what place inside of us do we get the you know, continue to get the impetus to trust again? That is a deep question. Where do we have the reason to trust people and rely on them and resist the temptation to manipulate them or restrict them or dominate them or coerce them or rule over them or dictate to them? Where do we find the power to believe in such a seemingly untrustworthy creature as our fellow man? You see, this whole issue of power, how deep it is, because an ideal world would be a world where most people could easily find success, that it's easy to walk the path from longing to success. 
this is the idea of the tree of life. And mankind, atheist or not, has always longed for something like that. So where does this kind of power come from? How do you pick yourself up? and try again to do things in the right and respectful way not that evil way where you're frustrated with human beings but you're gonna believe one more time you know this kinda reminds me of father's poem the crown of glory even though I'm deceived still believe you know where does that power come from simply put the power to believe and the power to love again and the power to reach out again to believe even though the evidence of, of human beings' faith is not there, the power to believe in cooperative potential between myself and other people, the power comes when I believe, 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 believe that my state is already sufficient. When I believe that my cup is full, when I believe then my cup overflows. Now, communists might call this the opiate of the masses, that you will feel that you're actually content or full even though, you know, physically or materially you're lacking, you know? That's their argument for materialism, communism, right? That uh, the, the religion has pacified us in our quest for material. But, Unless we start out from an optimistic point of view, it is very hard for us to feel that we're going to invest energy one more time in our fellow man, especially since man has a tendency to be fickle. This is where faith comes in, and the most important part of faith is believing that I am significant to someone and that my status in their eyes is never in jeopardy. From that position, knowing that I have an intact relationship, some place to fall back on, some place of significance to fall back on, that allows me to turn around, face the world, and move forward instead of feeling like, you know, naked or, or empty, you know? I think, you know, when God asked Adam and Eve that why they felt naked, they felt like they had no backing after they committed the fall. They felt like they had no, no backing. And you know, going back to that Garden of Eden mm, feeling, going back to the Tree of Life, is going back to that moment when you feel that you have backing and you're not in need anymore. And for me, I realized that that is my wife. Sometimes. You know, that we went through a number of years where she didn't realize that that's what she meant to me. But I got that from True Parents, that from, the, from True Parents' mind, uh, when they were giving me a spouse, that they were giving me exactly that. They were giving me their confidence that, that, that I was worth such a prize. There's nothing more valuable than my wife. There's nothing more valuable than someone's daughter. And, and, and so, by giving me the most valuable thing and me perceiving it, that is my, that is my foundation to, to never doubt that I'm significant, at least in my relationship with your parents and my relationship with my wife. From this position, just to dwell on it, to stay in remembrance of it, I have the power to choose to love people even no matter what their their background is no matter what their history is they could be the worst person in the world and I am still free to choose whether or not to love them and you know without that kind of love and cooperative energies in, in, in the human world this is such a sad fragmented world where people are looking to fulfill their own individual yearnings all alone without cooperation okay and this is the right way receiving the blessing and the, the, the emotional spiritual foundation of being a member of God's family this is um, the tree of life because it allows us to turn away from the whole question of what's missing for us and turn away from that question and face the world of possibility and just simply ask ourselves do I want to give one more time or do I want to give to this person? 
And when you decide and you take responsibility for who you're going to give to, there are no rules. You can give to good people, bad people, uh, fat people, skinny people, white people, black people, Asian people, Native American people. There's no limit because you're free. You are free. And you're free from worry because you are a part of the tree of life. All right, talk to you later.